intercompany transactions. Topic three, elimination entries for land. The same underlying principle as inventory applies to land. Profit cannot be recognized until the land is sold to a third party. Any profit on land sold between the two companies must be eliminated so long as it is still held by the purchasing company within the group. For land, this can be a long time. The elimination must occur every year until it's sold to an outside party. Remember, that's because we get to reinvent the wheel, the consolidated financial statements, every year. And that is because these consolidated financial statements don't occur outside the land of our consolidation. They take that year's entity-specific financial statements, smush them together, and eliminate any overlap, which means reinventing to the beginning of the year for opening, then stuff that happened during the year, and then um, some cosmetic items and final finalization for our consolidated end of year uh, or just simply consolidated financial statements. Where land is different from inventory is that inventory is assumed to be sold FIFO the next year, first in, first out the next year after the transaction occurs. Where um, And this is because inventory is short term unless otherwise stated. Friendly reminder that this elimination entry for land um, will sh be shown on the consolidated balance sheet at the original cost to the group. So land will be shown at its original cost is what we see if we've done it right on the face of the consolidated balance sheet. Friendly reminder, upstream transactions are when the sub sells up to the parent and downstream transactions are when the parent sells down to the sub. So similar again, uh, underlying principle is inventory. With the upstream transactions, the parent is only entitled to the part of the profit or loss based on ownership percentage, and the rest must be removed when calculating consolidated net income. And friendly reminder again, that no such adjustment is required for downstream transactions. Why? Well, if you said it's because the parent owns 100% of the parent, you are correct. All right, question time. Bigfoot sold two parcels of land to its subsidiary, Yeti, for $100,000 each. The land was recorded on Bigfoot's books at $120,000 per parcel. Yeti sold one of the parcels to an outside party for $100,000 in the same year. What is the consolidation adjustment at year end? Should we... A, remove $40,000 of profit, B, remove $40,000 of loss, C, remove $20,000 of profit, or D, remove $20,000 of loss. What do you think? Well, if you said D, remove $20,000 of loss, you'd be correct. The loss is uh, the total loss, the total inter uh, total loss from the intercompany transaction was forty thousand. That's twenty thousand dollars per parcel, and that's because Bigfoot had it on its books for one hundred twenty thousand per parcel. Yet it sold it to Yeti for one hundred thousand, resulting in twenty thousand dollars of loss per parcel. But we can only realize half of that loss when Yeti sold one of its parcels uh, to an outside company. Um, and it's funny because it tells you what it sold for 100000 It doesn't actually matter um, what Yeti sold for because this will be on Yeti's entity-specific financial statements. What really matters, uh, and that's reflected correctly, like third-party transaction, it happened, nothing to kind of adjust there. But the fact that it was sold to an outside party, this is the important factor. It could have been sold for $1 because it's an outside party. It is deemed to be a fair value. Otherwise, why would each entity uh, enter into that transaction? So this is the important part. This is just more numbers that can be uh, not put there intentionally to confuse you, but which could be confusing. All right, awesome, awesome work. We got one more of these. You guys are doing good. Stay strong. See you soon.